What's up YouTube? Welcome to the channel. My name is Jordan and today we're in the warehouse and we're going to be cutting some straight tube and making some awesome JDM blast pipes. But stick around because this is going to be a two-part series. Today we're going to cut the metal and tack it up and next time we're going to be polishing the metal and welding it all the way around. So stick around to see how we do it. So before we get into chopping the metal up and tacking it together, let's do a little history lesson and figure out what is a blast pipe? Why do people like this style and where did it come from? Just a simple definition is this is a blast pipe. It's going to jet out from the bottom of the car and shoot up sometimes even horizontally if you see this here. This gives you a really aggressive look of the exhaust pipe shooting up past the bumper. If you go on Google and you type in blast pipes you're gonna see all kinds of examples but really what this came from is a car biker gang in Japan. Bozo Zoku. Bozo Zoku. Bozo Zoku. Bozo Zoku. Bozo Zoku. Hold on. Bozo Zoku. Bozo Zoku. Anyway it's gonna be right here. This is how you say it. So they were um, a group of bikers in Japan and they became really famous for their really crazy styling for cars, whether it be the exhaust pipe sticking up or they have LEDs literally everywhere. I mean, you'll see people that have Lamborghinis just covered in LEDs and the body kits are always super crazy. A lot of people across the world have, have adapted to those style cues and this is something that is popular in the JDM community. And so a blast pipe is often on the Japanese classic cars from the 90s, 80s, and 70s. Well, I made a little small one here just as an example, but we're gonna be making some blast pipes out of three inch tube, which is quite a bit bigger and so I'm not really sure how it's gonna go but we're gonna give it a try this is the goal for this set of blast pipes we're gonna go from a three inch to two three inches two three inch pipe so it's basically gonna split off into two at 30 degrees and then that 30 degree cut is going to give us a little bit of space here to weld all these pieces but then as the the pipe split we're gonna use some pie cuts to turn it back to parallel and then after that we're gonna go up a certain degree and we're gonna use some more pie cuts and I think it's gonna give a really nice look so this is the goal that we're trying to achieve and yeah I've been looking forward to this project for a while so I'm excited to get started now that we've seen the plan, we got to start cutting the metal and then we're going to prep it so that eventually we can tack it together. Everything needs to fit up really, really nicely. Your cuts need to be super, super perfect. And the best way to do that is by using a bandsaw. I bought a bandsaw earlier this year and it's totally been a game changer as far as fabrication goes. And I definitely recommend it for any of you guys who are looking to fabricate stuff in your garage. There's a lot of uses for a bandsaw and that's what we're going to be using today to make all of our cuts. So I wanted to point out a couple things. Last year I picked up 3D printing and so I 3D print a lot of jigs that help me make these really precise cuts. If you want to get into this, learning to 3D print is going to be really, really useful. It's going to save you a lot of money and time. And in order for us to make those really, really nice cuts, you've got to use jigs. Professional machinists use metal jigs that cost hundreds of dollars and so what I've done is I've just made my own jigs using Fusion 360 that I just showed you on the computer. I have another jig that's going to help me make the beginning of the two to one collector. So yeah, You slide a piece of tube in there and imagine this is where the saw is going to go and this is going to help us cut it at a 30 degree angle and then when we're done with that cut we're going to flip it and we're going to cut it right here and what this is going to do is going to allow us to put two tubes together to make the beginning of that Y pipe of the collector. So really important and getting into 3D printing and doing custom fabrication it all goes together in one so you might as well learn both at the same time and you're going to save yourself a lot of time and money when i'm talking about having a nice cut i mean something like this See, this is why jigs are super important because this allows us to really hold that tube in place while the, the bandsaw cuts it. Just get super duper clean cuts and this is exactly what we're going to need to make that Y pipe. So now that we spent the last two hours cutting all of our material, we're going to have to end up cleaning it up. So if you take a look at some these pie cuts here. They've got these little bits of metal and those are called burrs. These little rough edges and these uh, these little pieces of metal, these are gonna get in the way of us tacking it together. So the next step is gonna be cleaning all of that up, making sure that these fit up really, really nice. Okay, so now that we've 
cleaned up all of our material. We sanded it down on the edges, that way it has a smooth exterior. And then we also used a deburring tool, which is a little thing that cuts the inside that makes the inside nice and smooth. And then after that, I always like to start tack welding my pie cuts first because um, they're relatively easy to do by themselves. I know that I need four 30 degree pie cuts. I've got eight pies here. Each one is 15 degrees total. So basically if I put these two together, that's 30 degrees. And yeah, I need four of those. So let's get started. And just like that, we got four pies all together. So in order to tack weld, you wanna go a little bit hotter than usual. To weld this all the way around, I'll use about 60 amps, but to do the tack welds, I'll use about 80. Nice quick burst, just zip it together, and that is it. After the pie cuts, I'm gonna do the merge collector. So there's the two pieces together. This one can be a little tricky to tack weld, especially if fit up is not perfect. This one's pretty good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do two right here and then probably one further down. So it's gonna be six tacks total. So I got the two to one collector over there and what I've done is you want to use permanent marker to mark where you're going to go. So it's really difficult to hold these things in place, but once you kind of get where you want it, put a little line with some permanent marker on either part, because if you don't make marks like this, it's going to be really hard to stay precise. And you can also copy the marks, the other parts, that way it's equal on both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and put it together and we'll see how it goes. So we just completed our initial tack. This is a really good stopping point usually for you to split the piece apart, start polishing the individual pieces, and then welding it all the way around. But unfortunately, we have a little bit of an issue. As you can see here, there's quite a big gap. I wanted this to be about half this distance, and I couldn't really do it by twisting the pie cuts or trying to angle it a certain way. It really was not working out. So I think we need to take an additional step and correct it. This piece is going to be going to a customer of mine, so I want to make sure that I'm putting my best foot forward and I want to make sure that it's going to look good on that person's car. Let's go through those extra steps and correct this problem and we'll show you how you can do that. You could twist these a little bit and twist this a little bit and maybe get them a little bit closer and you could fuss with this and fuss with that. But I think that's just gonna be a lot of work and I already have a lot of good tack welds here that are gonna stay in place. I'm going to split it here at the collector and I'm gonna grind away about a half an inch from either side of the collector and that's gonna pinch that gap. Once we pinch that gap, I'll tack it back together and we should be good to go. The gap is about an inch and a quarter. So about one and a quarter inch. And if we can split that gap in half, I think it will make this look a lot better. If we come up here, we need to do a quarter inch off of each side of the collector. So what I'm gonna do is split them and then I'm gonna use a Sharpie and I'm gonna mark off a quarter of an inch all the way through. That way, as I'm removing this material, I know exactly how much uh, I need to remove. And it's also gonna help me keep things level. Now that we've ground down all the way to the permanent marker line, we are ready to tack it back together. If 
we finally have a well-fitting set of pipes. Um, I'm very happy with that gap. I definitely think it's at least half of what it was before. I'm curious. I'm going to go measure it over there. So before it was an inch and a quarter, and now it is a little bit less than three quarters of an inch. So we definitely reduced the gap a lot. Overall, I'm really happy with the spacing now. I think it will look way better than it did before, and I think it's time to call it a night. All right, guys, we're gonna finish off the night with this completed set of blast pipes. All that's happened so far is it's been cut and everything's been tacked up, but like, man, I'm tired. I've been here way too long. Um, but it's all in the name of the game. I'm so glad that you guys came and checked this video out. If you enjoyed watching, please leave a comment and give me a thumbs up. I'm just starting this channel, so I'm having fun with it, and I loved you guys' feedback. Anything you want to let me know, something you like, you don't like, um, I'd love to hear it. Thanks again so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.